eighth day of the European tour and eighth gig. Consequently, today in Berlin and tomorrow the festival starts. So yes, sir. Well, you know, it's your first headline tour in Europe. So the classic question: How is it going? Honestly, um, it. It's been crazy for all of us because since we started kind of promoting this whole tour, there were two things in mind. Number one was obviously the fact that we've been a band for about 10 years, over 10 years now, but still these are the first headline shows that we're doing in countries like Germany that have always been so good to us. We've been there, you know, hundreds of times supporting other bands, doing festivals and stuff. So initially we weren't fully sure how the reaction is going to be. But, you know, after the first couple of shows, we were like, okay, there was, there was no need to stress the situation at all because just, you know, the crowds have been bigger than we ever could have imagined. You know, there's amazing fans that have come to every single show and it's just been, you know, doing 90 minute shows for this many days in a row is a very new concept to us. So honestly, it's it's been better than we ever could have imagined. And it's good to get that kind of uh, it's good to get that reassurance that we're definitely on the right path and we can stay and we can do this again very soon, I, I hope. So it's been good, man. Thank you. Yeah, what better place actually to finish the tour uh, than Berlin, but like uh, eight gigs in eight days. How are you feeling? I mean, honestly, super good. Like, obviously, uh, you know, doing so long and energetic and intense shows as Lost Society obviously always does. It does take its toll on your body. But, you know, as I was telling you earlier, you know, I'm just doing tea with ginger and stuff like that. So that will break anyone's fucking rock and roll dreams and everything. But, you know, when you take good care of your body, your body will be happy and it'll deliver night after night. So, you know, it's it's a new situation, but, you know, we're relatively young at this point anyway. So fuck it. You know, we I think if there's ever a time in our careers that we can do eight 90 minute shows in a row, it's going to be now. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to the music. Uh, if the Sky Came Down album came out last year, just a couple of years after No Absolution, and there were, you know, this thing called Corona and all that shit. So, from what kind of uh, ideas and, uh, you know, starting points did you start with the new album? Well, honestly, um, I feel like, honestly, reminiscing about all of that shit that fucking happened in the last four years kind of feels like a fever dream for me and I think a lot of other people. But, you know, kind of after No Absolution came out, which I always like to say this, that I still don't think we would have postponed it at all, even if we would have known what was going to happen in the world, because I feel like people had a decent amount to, of time to kind of get related to the record. They got to listen to the record, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like uh, if the sky came down, you know, it's a record that I've been very open about what it's about. It's about just basically my struggles with mental health. And, you know, the the album was kind of written from a perspective that this is going to be the last piece of art that I leave to this world. And, um, you know, it, I feel like in a way it sort of happened very naturally. There was something very organic about the writing process because I literally just said to myself, I don't give a fuck. It's like whatever people are expecting us to do, I do not care. This is literally all I have to say. It's all I want to leave into this world. And that's how the kind of that's how the whole record happened. And, you know, looking back to it and singing these songs with people, I'm really happy about the fact that, you know, it's it's not like I'm getting up on stage night after night and just, you know, kind of bleeding out all of those fucking wounds that I've tried so hard to kind of cover and and heal. It's more like we're celebrating life. We're celebrating the fact that we're all here. And, you know, I know that I'm not the only person who suffered from a lot of shit during those last couple of years. So I feel like, you know, what I gave to the world is something beautiful and something that we can all kind of, you know, it, it, it makes us all stronger together. And that's essentially what If the Sky Came Down is all about. Yeah, keeping all that in mind, how were the recordings and maybe what are your maybe best memories from the recordings? Well, I mean, honestly, that kind of will go down in the whole fever dream category because looking back, I literally don't remember a lot of anything because, you know, obviously I was sober and everything, but it's just when you're kind of 
when you're recording something that hurts so fucking much, it's like your your brain kind of does this whole, um, it goes into like a defense mechanism where it's just, you know, you're doing it, you're doing the best you can, blah, blah, blah. But afterwards, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a show also. It's like you put out something incredible, you have a great time doing it, but afterwards you just literally don't remember anything about it but you know from the things that i do remember obviously you know we we did it we wrote the record with the band and obviously with Johannes Parkonen who is just like one of the closest people i have in my life and i feel truly blessed that we were able to write these songs with him and he guided me through all of the weird fucking feelings that i had and and, um, you know, it's always going to be good times with him. And I feel like even though, you know, you end up singing songs that were meant for your fucking funeral and stuff like that, but still you can have, um, you can have a good time recording it, even though it, the subject matter can be what it is. So, you know, we had a great time, but if you ask me for specifics, I just, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. <laughs> is it too early to say how did corona and all that stuff how did it affect lost society well i mean the thing is that the corona itself you know i at this point when we can already kind of in in many ways we can say that we're over it i feel like you know the the music scene is healing the live scene is healing obviously there are deep wounds that will take very many years to kind of you know start getting better but i feel like now i can say that corona itself you know, obviously it destroyed all the possibilities we had for promoting our new record. And that's going to be all that's obviously always the worst thing. And not even in a way that we don't get to perform the songs, but in a way that we don't get to see our fans, because, you know, obviously we love every single person who supports this band and getting to play live shows is always the way where we get to say our thank yous our, you know, our proverbial thank yous for, you know, supporting the band, buying the records, all of that. So that's what kind of hurt us the most during Corona. But, you know, other than that, you know, I'm, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it helped in a way that we kind of knew that we're all in the same situation. It's like, we weren't the only ones who, who, you know, weren't allowed to tour or weren't allowed to do this and that. It's like, we all were in the same situation. So in a weird way that kind of helped, but you know, Looking back now, we had time to deal with a lot of shit. I had a lot of time to deal with a lot of shit. And, you know, we all came out the other side as, at least in my opinion, very, you know, much stronger people than we ever were before. So I, you know, even though it fucking sucked, we were the lucky ones. We were some of the luckier ones, definitely, in the whole crisis. You already touched this a bit, but uh, what are these 10 songs about? Is there like a running story on the album for you? Yeah, 100%. It's just, it's 10 songs delivering 10 stories that all go into one bigger theme, which is the, you know, the proverbial downward spiral that I went through in those two years. And, you know, there was something very kind of, there was something really scary, but very f like kind of um, liberating in the fact where you were writing songs without any kind of thought or you didn't sacrifice a single thought of can I do this or can I say this? It was just, you know what, I'm going through this shit, I'm feeling this shit, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. So if the sky came down is 100% just about, you know, the it's the crisis that a person can go through in their head and it's about the depths of how deep you can truly go in your own head. Would you like to give us a little backstory of one or two, like what for you are the key songs of the album? I mean, I have like uh, four songs here listed, but maybe you don't want to go for that long, so. Well, I mean, uh, since since the record was kind of finished or to take it even a bit uh, even a bit more back from that is kind of when we had our de raw demos of all the songs I always said that I feel like one one two is kind of the it's kind of like the 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 summary of the record it's like you know reading the back cover of a book it's like that will give you a good idea of what's happening it's just the ultimate kind of self-reflection of myself in that situation and um, you know in a, in a big way 112 kind of gives a, a lot of the themes of what we're talking about another one for me is also the last song of the record which is suffocating which essentially 
the only thing I said to myself while, while writing that song was that this is going to be the last song that I ever write. So in that sense, everything that happens in between is it's kind of the the little nuances of what was going on in that situation. It's it's it, it's kind of painting these pictures of what the human mind can truly think in that situation when it's in such kind of panic so you know you can have songs like what have i done that are painting these murder scenes which essentially you know is just something that your brain will fucking draw up at some point when you're feeling those emotions you can have a song like hurt me that's just pure fucking you know pure kind of like sadistic um hurting yourself and stuff like that and you have awake in between which is just the ultimate reflection of what you feel like will happen when you finally just pass away from this life into the next one so you know it, so in short one one two suffocating and awake because it's like the perfect three chapters of the record could we have one of my own picks uh stitches oh hell yeah St I, i love stitches like just you know from the subject matter and the song itself I feel like I always have to say also that that's become just like a gem, an absolute gem while playing it live. I love to do it and it really gets the crowd going. But, you know, the song itself, it's I think it, it, it gives out pretty much like the name of the song gives away a lot of what it's all about, which is that every single person on on this planet, you know, they have those wounds that at some point, you know, no matter if they want it or not, they're gonna have to face them. Those stitches, you know, that's just, it's it's temporary. You can put a plaster over a cut, you can put stitches over a wound, but if you don't properly care for them, if you don't take care of what's gonna happen next, they're always gonna open up. And stitches was a way just of saying that, you know what, now we're fucking, let's open every single issue because sooner or later, I'm gonna have to start, you know, doing something about everything that I'm feeling. Yeah, at the end of this year, you'll be touring with Amorphis. Uh, what else do you have planned for this year? We're doing, uh, after we get home from here, we're doing uh, so some select summer festivals. After that, we're going to be doing um, a week of headline shows in the UK, which I'm really looking forward to. And yeah, as you said, we're going to be doing uh, the tour with Amorphous, which is going to be great because I feel like that's that's it's been a long time coming because, you know, obviously we know each other. We share a management and, you know, we've we've done uh, shows together in the past. So that's going to be great. And, um, you know, after that, it's gonna I'm going to be writing a lot of music all year long, as I always do. And for the end of the year, there's going to be some pretty cool special things that we're going to announce a bit later for our friends in Finland. About the future, I would still like to ask, uh, how much are you thinking about the sixth album or rather in which stage is the sixth album? Well, I feel like it's uh, it's something that I've constantly been thinking about since we released the previous one, because I feel like, you know, after you find, I think it's always the final step of kind of in a way, giving away a product is when it's released. You know, I, I call it a product, but that's obviously not what it is. But in some sense, it is. It's a fucking thing. And we gave it to everyone. And when that happens, then your mind kind of resets itself. And, um, you know, obviously after that, I've been writing a lot of lyrics, been writing a lot of riffs, a lot of choruses and stuff like that. And we've had already a couple of sessions doing demos and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously there's nothing ready yet, but it's something that's on our minds. And, you know, the fucking stuff that we're writing is once again, um, you know, it's kind of continuing some of the themes musically of what we did with If the Sky Came Down, but there's so much new shit and it's going to be fucking great. <laughs> Yeah, well, we started the interview kind of uh, from the starting points and uh, ideas behind if the sky came down. So, uh, of course, things are not that possible to analyze while they're happening, but uh, this is maybe a time capsule then. So if you would uh, now think what kind of um, ideas and uh, what kind of starting point are you, you know, starting to make the sixth album? What would you say? Well, I'd say it's obviously from a it's going to be from the perspective of someone who's in a better state of mind than they ever have been, healthier both in mind and body. So, you know, that obviously always does make a huge difference, but I feel like 
you know, the things that I was talking about on the previous record, they're things that have been kind of building up for the last 27 years of my life. So in a way, I feel like I'm writing, you know, the first thing I've ever written again, because, you know, in a way I've never been in this kind of state of mind. So I'm sure that's something that will be heard on the new stuff for sure in, in one way or another. But, you know, as depressing as it is fucking, you know, the name Lost Society to begin with, it's about it's about everything that we're observing everything i've ever sang about is stuff that i observe and it's just my way of saying these things so as uh, what i was saying as depressing as it is i feel like the world in so many ways is not getting any better so there's always going to be stuff that i'm going to be able to talk about but i feel like what if the sky came down gave me was the liberty to just be as honest about things as i can be because that's what i kind of owe everyone who's going to be listening to the music because they've given me so much. So it's kind of the, it's the, it's the least I can do to give them my full, honest peace of mind. In the beginning of the interview, you said that, uh, mentioned that uh, you, you guys have actually been around for a long time. So what are the first things that come to mind when you reminisce about the demo years, like 2010, wow. 2012? Well, honestly, the thing that always kind of, kind of, um, baffles me still at this stage is that we didn't play too many shows before we actually kind of you know broke out in some way because you know i was underage so we got you know we got the rare fucking uh you know bar show here and there but i felt like it was our like i always said to the guys we're gonna do band competitions because you know bars won't take us and there's only so many fucking youth centers in the middle of Finland that we can invade. So, you know, we did a couple of band competitions and I always will remember that being the turning point for us. But what a lot of people kind of who have just observed the fact that we did, you know, a couple of band competitions, then we got signed to Nuclear Blast. What they forget or what they don't maybe know is that we spent, you know, we did our 10,000 hours at the rehearsal place. We were there night and day seven days a week, every day after we got out of school until the fucking night time. And I feel like, you know, for all those people who, you know, it, it, simultaneously, the people who are like, oh, you got everything so easy. And to the people also who are like, how can you guys be so tight live for, for both of those people? I always say, well, we practiced, we practiced together night and day. So honestly, that's like the most, that's the most important thing that, you know, that I always think about. And I fondly do think about it because obviously now when we're a bit older, we've, we've all done our 10,000 hours together. So we don't practice constantly. We still do, but not to the extent that we did back in those days. So that's something I'm always going to look back at, you know, in, um, and smile about the fact that we were just, we saw each other more than we saw our families at that stage. And I mean, we still do in a way when we're touring, but you know, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, over a decade ago. So what's, uh, what are the biggest differences, you know, from the salad days to till today? Uh, honestly, the, the, I think one of the things that pushes us forward constantly is the fact that in so many ways, nothing has changed. We've always been... We've always been sober when we go on stage. We've always maintained our kind of professionalism towards what we do. We don't like to fuck around. It's like when we have a show, we know that there's, you know, it's one person or 10,000 people who have paid a ticket. So we're never going to take that for granted. Every show we play is going to be a fucking stadium show. So in so many ways, nothing has changed. But, you know, I mean, it's just realities in a way. It's like we know what we're doing. And we also know that we have to trust our instincts with everything because that's what we've always done. You know, we played thrash because we love to play thrash. We started doing melodic choruses because we love melodic choruses. And, you know, we fucking wear makeup because we like makeup. It's like, I feel like our job is just to be exactly who we are because in that way, no one else is going to compete with you because no one else can replicate what you are. Mixing trash metal with melodic uh, influences and makeup. So isn't it time you guys get your own genre? Exactly. But that's the thing. I have always said from the fucking from day zero, I've said we play 
lost society it's like that's the only genre that i fucking need it's like because i feel like you know when you get to the stage of being metallic or slipknot or fucking limp biscuit or whatever well limp biscuit they kind of invented a genre in that sense but you know you never call slipknot a uh, new metal progressive you know heavy whatever the fuck you call it slipknot same with metallica I've always liked to think it's lost society, pure and simple. We do whatever the fuck we want to do. Like a criminal.